Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome again to our Wednesday night dinner. Good to have you to join us tonight. If you are joining us on Facebook Live, appreciate you guys being with us. Uh, if you tune in to this at a later date, uh, and watch it. Uh, thank you for tuning in. For those that have called in on the conference call, uh, glad that you guys have joined us as well. We are still talking about Jesus in the tabernacle. And we are going to be looking at another article of furniture uh, on uh, tonight. Uh, we are actually going to be looking at the bronze laver. The bronze labor. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to spend some time uh, talking about this bronze labor. So before we begin tonight, we always like to ask God to bless our study uh, together. So join me as we pray at this time. Father, we thank you for the lesson tonight. We thank you for what this lesson is going to mean to all of us. Father, I pray that our hearts will receive uh, this message on oh, tonight. Mm -hmm. Help this message to change our lives. Mm -hmm. Once we understand mm -hmm. the purpose of the bronze labor. Mm -hmm. Be with me as I teach your word on oh, tonight. Father, I pray that you give me a mind that will remember the things uh, that I have studied. And Father, I just ask the Holy Spirit to yes, lead God please. and direct me uh, in this study mm -hmm. on tonight. Watch over us, continue to bless us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen, everyone. Now, for those of you that have the copy or the picture that I handed out, I want you to be turning uh, to, the, to the picture that have the east gate, which is 30 feet wide, and you ought to see some cattle, you ought to see the priests, you ought to see the bronze altar, you ought to see the bronze laver. Now, if you look at that picture, and those that's on Facebook Live, you can see it uh, on the screen behind me, but if those that's on conference call, I ask you to turn to that picture, because I want you to see where the bronze laver is located. Now, for those that may be just joining us, uh, I know this may be new to you. Uh, you may be running a little behind on our study. Uh, also, I want to encourage those that have been with us to continue to stay with us and study uh, this subject of Jesus in the uh, the tabernacle. We own our overall series of Jesus in every book of the Bible. And we just in the second book. We just in the book of Exodus. Now, for those that uh just joining us, let me kind of bring you up to where we are. Because every week seems like we have some new uh visitors that make comments on our Facebook page. But let me count it back up and then rehearse or remind us of where we are in the, the tabernacle. Now remember we came through the east gate. East gate about 30 feet wide. We talked about this gate as being Jesus. Jesus is the gate. Jesus is the door. There was only one way into the tabernacle and there's only one way. Uh, into the presence of God. Jesus says, unless a man come by me, uh, you won't find to see the Father. So Jesus is that gate. Now, once you came through the gate, the first article of furniture you saw was this huge altar. It was called the bronze altar. We talked very, uh, a lot about this altar and the purpose the purpose of the altar was that whenever you brought your sacrifice through the east gate, uh, you would lay your hands on the animal to identify with that animal to transfer the guilt of your sin to the animal. And the animal was killed uh, because of your sin. Now, we talked about how Jesus Christ died 
died for our sins. He took upon himself our sin. Now, once you get past the altar, the bronze altar, the next piece of furniture or article that you'll come to is the bronze laver. Now, for those that are watching it on the screen, if you notice the yellow arrow that I have pointing, that is pointing to uh, the bronze laver. Now, notice the location of this bronze laver. The location is between the bronze altar and the tent of meetings. Okay? Notice it's between that. Also, I want you to notice that the common person, the Israelite worshiper that came in through the gate and brought his animal could not go no further than the bronze altar. He could not pass that altar. The only person that could go past the bronze altar to the bronze laver was the priest. No other person could go that far. So here you have the priest going to this laver. Now, now what is the purpose of the bronze laver? Well, if you got your Bibles, I want you to turn to Exodus chapter 30. Okay? Exodus chapter 30. I want to read Verses 17 through 20. That's Exodus chapter 30, verse 17 through 20. Give you a time to get there. Hope you are there uh, by now. Notice what the Bible says. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Thou shalt may also make a labor of brass, and his foot also of brass, to wash withal. And thou shalt put between the tabernacle of the congregation and the, the altar, and thou shalt put water therein. For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. Now when they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water that they die not. Nor we are when they come near the altar to minister to burn offering made of fire unto the Lord. So they shall wash their hands and their feet that they die not. And it shall be a stature forever to them, even to them and the sea throughout their generation. Now, here's what God told Moses to do. He said, Moses, after he gave him the instructions on building the bronze altar. He gave them the dimensions of how it's supposed to have been built. Now he turns to this brazen uh, laver. Now notice one thing. Out of everything we want to talk about in this tabernacle, God gave a dimension. He gave a measurement. For every one of them except the labor. He did not tell us how big it is, how deep it was. The Bible don't say. And I often wonder, why is it that he didn't tell us the measurements or the dimensions of this labor? I think I know, but I'm going to wait to the end and share that with you once we understand the purpose of the bronze labor. Now notice how serious God is about these instructions. 
He says that the priests had to wash their hands and their feet with water before they could even come into the tent of meetings, before they could go through the curtain to the holy place, they had to wash their feet and their hands. Now, why did they have to do that? Now, keep in mind, what had the priest just been doing? He had just been slaughtering these animals. There was blood probably on his hand. There was dust uh, on his feet. And God wanted him to clean up before they came into uh, the holy place. Now, if they did not wash, notice how serious God is. God said, you want to die. You see that there in verse 21? He said, so they shall wash their hand and their feet that they die not. In other words, God said, if you don't do it, like I say, do it. You going to, to die. Now, most of the time, most of us realize that this priest, the high priest that goes into the most holy place, we already know that he had to do everything just right. He had to offer up sin for himself, for, mm -hmm. for the people, because if he didn't, he was going to die. And we can understand that from the most holy. But notice this. Before he could even get into the tent of meetings. Before he could get into the holy place. Before the most holy or the holies of holy. He had to make sure he washed his hand and feet. Because if he did not, he was going to die. He said, why in the world would God be so specific? God said, this is the way it is. I'm a holy God, and I cannot be approached by dirt, by filth. I cannot be approached by that which is unclean. Notice when we talked about the tent that was around the, uh, the, the curtain that was around the ark, it was made of what? White linen. In other words, that shows us the holiness of God. So God is a holy God. And he cannot be approached by a people that is filthy, dirty. God wants us to clean up ourselves up. Now, what is the purpose of this bronze labor? The purpose was for the priest to wash his hands. And wash his dusty feet before he even enters the tent. Now, interesting thing about this bronze labor is this. If you flip over to chapter 29 and verse number 4, you will find out that the priest had to be washed. His whole body had to be washed. Now, in Exodus 30, we just talking about washing his hands and feet. But before the priest could either enter the tabernacle area, the Bible says he had first had to take a bath. He had to wash his whole body. Now, how do I know that? In Exodus 29 and verse 4, Aaron and his sons thou shalt bring up to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and thou shalt wash them with water. Also in Exodus 40 and verse number 12 said the same thing. And thou shalt bring Aaron and his son to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and wash them with water. But even in the book of Leviticus, chapter 8 and verse number 6, it's Moses said that he brought Aaron and his son and washed them with 
water. Now, it is interesting how God set this up. Because all of this is going to be pointing to Jesus. All of it is going to be pointing up to us in the New Testament because water is so important in cleansing us. So here you have the priest had to wash his whole body first. Once he went in and he started cutting the throats of the animals, his hand became bloody, feet became dusty. Now, before he go into the tent, he got to wash his hands in uh, this water in the brazen laver. Let me share something else interesting about this labor. If you flip over to Exodus chapter 38 and verse number 8, notice what he says. And he made the labor of brass and the foot of it of brass of the loving, of the looking glasses of the women assembling which assemble at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Now notice what he says. He says, how did they make this brazen labor? There were some women who had some mirrors. One version says mirrors. Another one says a polished bronze. Because, see, they didn't have mirrors like you and I have mirrors today. But they would polish this bronze. And, and as they would polish it, it would shine. And they could see their reflection in it. There were some women, these Israelites women, who had some of this shining bronze that they could see themselves or see their reflection in. They were ministering at the tabernacle, at the entrance of the tabernacle. Now you see that? God have always used women. These women had a specific duty. They had a specific job that they had to do. But they had these mirrors. King James says, looking glasses. But they had them. Where did they get them from? Remember where they got all the gold and all the silver? Egypt. They got it from Egypt. They must have got it from the women of Egypt. So here they are in the wilderness with this bronze uh, mirror. They donated their mirrors to Moses in order for them to build uh, this brazen uh, labor. Now, why was that? It is said that when the priest would look into the water, he could see a reflection uh, of himself. He could see the dirt on him. He could see maybe the filth. He could see the uncleanness on him. It reflected out of that water. That is so interesting. Because we're going to find the purpose of the labor. Not only just for the priest to wash his hand and feet. But there is another reason. For this bronze labor. I come up with two. There's probably more. But I think the purpose of this labor was. First of all. Was to reveal. It revealed something. About the priest himself. But then it also provides. It provided cleansing. For him. As he washed in this labor. So we see then primarily two reasons for the bronze labor. It was to reveal and it was to provide. Now let's see 
if we can see Jesus in the bronze labor, okay? Now, we do know that the Bible talks about the word of God being like a mirror. By fact, in James chapter 1, verses 23 through verse 25, James said, For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is likened unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. One version said, in a mirror. And he beholdeth himself, but he goeth his way, and straightway he forgetteth what manner of man he was. But notice verse 25. He said, but whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, and being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. What is James trying to get us to see? James is trying to get us to see that the word of God, this book right here in my hand, it is just like a mirror. It is a mirror because you can look into it and you can see yourself. Uh, you can see what you're not doing and you can see what you ought to be doing that you are not doing. James said this, this word is like a mirror. But he said um, sometimes the problem with you and I, we look in it, we see what needs to be corrected but then we just turn and walk away and forget what we really saw. Now we don't do that when we look into a mirror, when we get in dress, say on Sunday mornings, you look into that mirror and you want to make sure your hair is right, your makeup is right, I want to make sure my tie is straight, make sure everything is right when you look into the mirror. What sense would it make for you to look into the mirror, see what's wrong, see some flaw, and then you say, I ah, don't worry about it, and you just go on about your way. You don't do that. Neither do I. But James says, there is a time that you may look into God's mirror, and you see what you need to be doing, but you seem like you forget as soon as you read it. He says, it's a mirror. You see yourself. Can't we see maybe the bronze labor that the priest could see the reflection of himself in that water? Here we see ourselves in the word of God. Matter of fact, Paul puts it this way in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 18. Paul said, but we all huh. with open, open face beholding as in a glass or a mirror the glory of the Lord. We are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. In other words, you want to know what this book does for all it of us? us? This book will change you. If you look in it, read it, and apply it, and be a doer of the Word, and not just a hearer only, this book will change you. He said, into the same image uh, from glory to glory. That's the purpose of the mirror, so that we can be changed. The word of God is what changes us. The word of God is what washes us. We are washed in the word. The bronze laver is it provides a cleansing for us. 
Another way I can say it is that the bronze laver could be the word of God for us. Yeah. You remember Paul says in Ephesians huh. 5 yes. verses 25 through verse 27. Paul says, husbands, yes. love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself uh, for it. For what purpose? That he might sanctify yes. and cleanse it with the washing of of water by the word. The word is what cleanses us. The word is what removes the dirt and the filth from our lives. But we have to apply it. We have to spend some time in the word of God. Out of all of the articles in the tabernacle, from the altar to the lampstand to the altar of incense to the showbread, even to the Ark of the Covenant and the cherubims on top. Now, we ain't got the none of those yet, but you want to know where the priest spent most of his time? He didn't spend the majority of his time at the altar. You want to know why? Because all he did was brought it to the priest that was there at the altar and they would just burn the meat after he had cut it up. You remember? When we get inside of the tent, we want to find out that he spent very little time at each one of those articles of furniture. But where did he spend the majority of his time? At the bronze labor. Why? Because he had to continue. It was a continuous washing of his hand. Every time he would slaughter an animal, he had to come and wash his hand in this bronze labor. He spent countless hours at this bronze labor. Why was that so important? It was so important because if he did not do it, he would, die. he would die. So he spent a lot of time. Why am I emphasizing that? I'm emphasizing that because we need to spend a lot of time in the Word Washing. of God. We need to spend the majority of our time in God's Word. Why? It's because the Word is what cleanses us. You remember Jesus said in John 15 and verse number 3, He said, now you are clean through the what? Through the Word which I have spoken unto you. My fact, in Jesus' prayer in John 17, and verse 17, Jesus says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So the word is so important, just like the bronze laid by. Paul writing to the church at Corinth and 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse number 1, Paul says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Paul said, there's some things you got to have to clean yourself. Cleanse. Just like the priest had to clean his own hand. God didn't clean his hand for him. Now God provided the basin. He provided the water. But the priest had to cleanse his own hand. God provides us the word. And Paul said, let us cleanse ourselves. We're going to have to really put some sweat equity into studying God's word. Matter of fact, you remember John? John said in 1 John 1 and verse number 9, he said, if we confess our sins, huh. he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to do what? 
and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. John said, if you just confess your sin, God is faithful. He's just. And guess what he'll do? He'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That word confess is a very interesting word. Matter of fact, that word confess actually comes from the Greek word homo logeo, which is actually a compound word, who uh, know, and logos, which literally means to say the same uh, thing as another. It means to agree with or to say the same thing about your sin that God says. Now that's what confess or confession really mean. I understand how God feels about this. How do I understand how God feels? Guess where I find it at? I find it in the Word. So when I see in the Word how God feels feels about a thing oh. then I'm going to have to say the same thing God says about my sin just go back to the priest what did God say for him to do when he came uh, before he came uh, into the tent of meetings God says you got to watch yeah. now you got to say the same thing that God said. Why? Because if they did not say and do, they were going to die. When God says a certain thing about our sin, we're going to have to say the same thing that God says about our sin. Now, if we do that, and when we do that, God is faithful and he is just to forgive, to forgive us of our sin. Cleanse you, us. Can't, you can't think you're going to fool God. You can't think you're going to pour the wool over God's eyes. God said, if you just say what I say, I'm faithful and I will cleanse you of your sin. But if you try to hide behind and say and not say what I say, or say what somebody else say. Because somebody else may say, well, I, that sin ain't that bad. Uh, you don't have to do this. Or you don't have to do that. You better stop listening to others. And you better listen to what God says about your sin. Confess. Lord, I understand how you feel about this sin that I just committed. Huh. And I know in my heart, how you feel. And I'm going to confess that I have done this just like you said for me to confess. Now, that's real uh, confession. Not just saying I have sinned. Because sometimes we hide behind the fact, well, when I've sinned, I ask the church to pray for me. That's well and good. But confession and repentance it's two different things. You can say, well, I repented, but have you confessed? Then if you confess, then you will repent. Don't hide behind the word repent. I have repented of my sin. I'm confessing my sin. Now, I want to know, God want to know, are you saying what I say about your sin? Now, we're going to find that in... Uh, the word. The psalmist puts it this way. In Psalm 32 and verse 5. He said, I acknowledge my sin unto thee. And my iniquities have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgression unto the Lord. And thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. He says, I'm just going to acknowledge it. I'm going to acknowledge my sin. I'm going to confess my transgression to, the Lord. to uh, the Lord. But then again in Psalm 130, 
verses 3 and 4. The Bible said, If thy Lord should mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. That's King James. Can I read that to you from the NLT version? Psalm 130, verses 3 and 4. Listen to the New Living Translation of that verse. Lord, if you kept a record of sins, who, Lord, could ever survive? Amen. Lord, don't keep a record. Mm. He casts them away. But if you offer forgiveness that we might learn, learn to fear you. Amen. It's all about the word. Washing. Mm. Stand in the, the word. Don't forget the word. Mm. If you want to know about the word and how important the word of God is, you need to walk through Psalms 119. The longest psalm in the Bible. The longest book in the Bible. The longest chapter, I mean, in the Bible. It's psalms 119. I believe it have 176 verses in it. You want to know something about the Word? Let's take a walk through Psalm 119. I got about a few minutes left. Now, I'm going to go through these. Hey, you can write them the them down. By fact, just go back and read the whole Psalm 119. I'm just going to pick out some verses here to show you how important the word was to the psalmist. In Psalm 119 verse 9, says, Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to uh, thy word. Then in verse 11, he said, Thy word. Have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee? Verse 16. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Verse 17. Deal bondedly with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. Verse 25. My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. Verse number 28. My soul melteth for heaven is strengthen thou me according to thy word. Verse 38. Establish thy word unto thy servant who is devoted to uh, thy fear. Verse 41. Let thy mercy come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. So shall I therewith answer reproaches me. Why? Because I trusted in thy word. Verse 43. And take not thy word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hope in thy judgment. Verse 57. Thou art my portion, O Lord. I have said I would keep thy word. Verse 58. I entreat thy favor with the whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. Verse 65. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according to to thy word. Verse 67. Before I was afflicted. Yeah. I went astray. But now have I kept thy word. Verse 74. They that fear thee. Will be glad. When they see me. Because I hope. In thy word. Verse 76. Let I pray thee. O merciful kindness. Be comfort. According to thy word unto thy servant, my soul fainteth for salvation, but I hope in thy word. Verse 82, my eyes fail for the word said, when will thou comfort me? Verse 97, oh how I love 
thy word. It is my meditation now all the day. Verse 101. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I may do what? Keep thy word. Verse 103. How sweet are the words unto my taste. Yeah, yeah they are sweeter yeah. than honey to my mouth. Now, I know you know this one. Yeah. Psalm 105. Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Verse 107. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy word. Verse 109. My soul is continually in my hand, yet do I not forget thy word. Verse 113. I hate vain thoughts, but thy word do I love. Verse 114. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Verse 116. Uphold me according to thy word that I may live and let me not be ashamed and hope. My eyes fail for salvation for the word of thy right righteousness. 130. Thy interest of thy words yeah. giveth life and giveth understanding unto the simple. Oh, I know you know this yeah. one. 133. Order. Order my steps in thy word. word and let not iniquity yeah. have dominion yeah. over yeah. me. Verse 139. My zeal has consumed, consumed me. Because my enemies has forgotten thy word. 140. Thy word is very pure. Therefore thy servant Love loveth it. 147. I prevented the dawning of the morning and cried. I hope in thy word. Verse 148. My eyes prevent the night watches that I might meditate. In thy word. Verse 153. Consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget thy word. 154. Plead my cause. Deliver me. Quicken me according to thy word. Behold the transgression. I was grieved because I kept not, not thy word. Thy word is true, true from the beginning and every one at thy righteous judgment and do it forever. Princes yeah. have persecuted me because without a, without a call, but my heart standeth stand in all of thy word. Of thy word. 162 said, I, I rejoice, rejoice in thy word as one findeth great spoil. I hate and harbor lie, but the word I love. 169, let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. 170, let my supplication become before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. 174, I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord, and thy word is my delight. Lastly, but not least, 176, I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy words. Oh, you see how important the word is? Just walk through Psalm 119, and you'll see how important the word really is. I got one minute left, 60 seconds. Let me wrap this up by kind of giving you a recap of this bronze labor. Okay? The bronze labor was for the purpose of the priest washing his hand, washing his feet. It was made out of the mirrors that the women uh, brought from Egypt. 
It had a reflection in it so he could see himself as he washed his hand. The bronze labor to us is the word of God that we can look into and we can see ourselves. We pray that as we look into the word that we would make the necessary changes that need to be made. Now, next week, okay, we have come through the gate. We have come over the altar. We have now come through the bronze labor. Next week, we are going to be entering into the tent of millions, okay? First of all, we'll go through the curtain. We'll talk about that curtain. Then we're going to go inside of the holy place. There are three articles of furniture in there. And we're going to look at all three of them and see how that relates to Jesus Christ. Thank you guys for tuning in. Amen. I thank you that uh, you are listening. Stay with Hope you can be encouraged. Because once we get through this, you want to see how important it is for you to read and study the Old Testament. For Jesus, Jesus. is all the way through the Bible. Father, we thank you for our lesson tonight. We thank you for the bronze labor. Father, we thank you uh, for the time we are spent tonight. Father, we thank you that, that the word is so important to us. We thank you for giving us the word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light along our pathway. Help us to look into it, make the necessary changes, for we ask it in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good night, everyone.